Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow flat. NASDAQ is uh, down six. S&Ps are up seven and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter. Now, the way you get the newsletter, you come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content, Mastering Probability. You can just hit that subscribe button, and you can get Steve's newsletter for $149 for one month. You can get it for a year, for six months, for $695, which is a savings of $199. You can get it for a year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Check it out right in the front page of TFNN. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? You know, Tom, I was thinking if... Um if uh, if Tim Cook had just simply contacted you, and in his rollout today, his paid for news uh, service included uh, TFNN News, I, I would sign up for that. I'll tell you, man. It, <laughs> it, it, thank you for all of us. But it, it it's so weird, man. I mean, it is so weird. It's like and I agree. The, so check it out, folks. Like the two big things was that yeah, you, you get the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Well, great. That that's that's they're great two. Newspapers, there's no doubt, but guess what? You can get all that stuff for nothing. So it's like, really? No, no doubt, no doubt. And we've been talking the Apple TV thing, you know, for, oh. for a. Now, look, I, I've got two, you know, Apple TV, you know, boxes in my house, and it's great simply because of the mu the music. Yeah, you know, right. I've got I've got all of my music that you know I can play however I want to. Oh, they have that it, nailed. There's no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt, man. Yeah. It, it, you know, and it, and that's a great thing. But uh, you know the these the, the so-called other Apple TV stuff, I've just never really yeah you know it's had, seen it hasn't caught right? man. They got all yeah. the devices, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, let's I'm take, looking let's at take, a, let's take a message from the markets of the Dow. Is that what I'm looking yeah. at here? Yeah, the bulls and the bears always fighting out, just like you were talking about. And thanks for that update too about uh, uh, each of the meetings going on over in the UK out there. So it'll be interesting to watch the uh, currency markets trade yeah. overnight. You know, as those things happen. But what I thought we could do here for the next uh, several minutes is just I wanted to focus on primarily the Dow, but we'll take a look at a couple of other things. And I wanted to because we have so many different types of of uh, investors and traders in the audience. Uh, is just start by taking a look at the big picture, and then we'll hone it down a little bit more uh, for the Dow. Now, when I'm looking at the Dow, folks, what I'm beginning with here is a quarterly chart for the Dow Equity Futures contract. And the reason that I'm looking at the Equity Futures contract versus the cash contract is because I get to use these terrific uh, tools that Tom has been able to help integrate uh, with his relationship with the folks over at Taz, and here what we have are the quarterly profile. So really big picture out here with regard to support and resistance, and that's what these tools can really be used for to assist us in understanding what the message of the markets are. So on a quarterly basis, uh, if we take a look at the uh, the move that we've had off of the lows in December, prices run into resistance, which is this red line. It's at twenty five eight fifty five. And this on a quarterly basis out here. So that's resistance. We've run into it. It makes sense that we're seeing uh, some uh, pullback as we speak right now. Now, support, if price were to, if this were to be a, a more significant top that we've seen, and this is as of Friday, because that move on Friday is one where it could signal some type of uh, larger top out here. Price could easily get back down and test those December lows. And that's 21,141 as far as the market profile is concerned. Now, the monthly time frame chart also shows the Dow, the YM, the Dow Equity Futures contract, running into resistance, which is 25,928. And so if, in fact, the markets are going to pull back, its target, the monthly target, takes us into the 23,756, 24,118 level. If we take a look at profiles on a, on a weekly basis, we can see that resistance, and this is where it really sticks out, resistance for the Dow Equity Futures contract, 26,144. And that is held like a very solid line. I don't know the exact top tick of last week. But it looks like it was pretty much right there. So here, a pullback says, I'd say 24,746, two as low as 23,814. The daily time frame chart, and this is really the key. So we've looked at larger time frames, but in order for there to be a change in trend, we really need to see support uh, fail. And here on the daily profiles, that level is 25,341. This chart was a snapshot from maybe about an hour ago, so I don't know exactly where we're trading. But, folks, the, the level you want to watch tonight 
the level you'd want to watch when I say tonight, not just going to the close, but overnight or tomorrow morning, it would be 25,341. If you see the Dow equity futures contract trading below that, that could truly be a change in trend signal out there. So my conclusion based upon the TAS market profiles, Tom, is that no level of support or resistance has failed just yet. And price is just consolidating. But should we see a close inside the Dow Equity Futures contract today, tomorrow, whenever, below 25,341, that will signal a change in trend. And then you can start taking a look at those larger areas of a uh, pullback uh, that we looked at on the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly timeframes. Now, if I go take a look at just simply trend lines, things remain bullish. From a quarterly standpoint, here's the bullish trend lines out here. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, these trend lines also remain bullish at this uh, uh, time frame. But we can take, as far as resistance levels, I take the high from January and then the high from, I believe it was October, September, October, as a level that the Dow would need to clear before it would change its trend to the upside. The weekly time frame, we can see that little descending trend line. So resistance about the 26 250 area out here and if we take a look at the daily time frame it's nice because i've got a short-term daily trend line that in essence really lines up with the bottom of that market profile in that 25 341 level so it's really great to have multiple levels of of support that are showing up here so that if if that breaks it just sends a really clear message or should be a clear message with regard to a change in trend if i look at uh, horizontal trading ranges out here. The monthly time frame shows support right now at about 24,743. The weekly shows support at 25,268. These would be levels we would be looking for if the daily time frame closes below the numbers that we looked at. Uh, here on the daily time frame chart for the horizontal trading ranges, price is trading below its level of support, 25,558. That's why I go back to that daily chart, watching that trend line, watching the bottom of that TAS profile, because here, this would say the next move to the downside would be about 24, 925 out there. So my conclusion with regard to the Dow is really watching this 25, 341 level. Lastly, and to switch off from the Dow, uh, for me, it's going to be about the spot volatility index, and that is the bottom portion of this screen out here. Okay. And the blue line on the bottom portion is the closing price of the spot fix index. And where I have the red kind of rectangular box around price on the S&P, which is the top portion, as well as the red box around the bottom, which is the spot fix index, this shows when... Price, when the spot fix index is trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. My interpretation of that is it shows lack of liquidity inside of the market. And what you can see by the red rectangular areas, that has always put selling pressure inside the S&P 500. If you look at the green rectangular box, this doesn't catch the bottom, but this catches the trend. We have been below the 50-day exponential moving average up until the close on Friday. And so today, the key number is about 1612, 1613. And the spot fix index closes above that. Watch those levels of support I gave them in the Dow. In the ES Mini, the number is going to be 2800.25. A close yeah. below that. And it, is, it is amazing. You know, like right here, folks, the market's not even down. It's flat, and they're still buying insurance because they're at 1673. Yeah, which always tells you there's uh, So it's going to be interesting to them. Yes. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go to Feature Content, Master in Probability. Hit that subscribe button. Steve, thanks so much, man. We look forward to the show tomorrow. You're welcome. Thanks, Tom.